Okay, today I want to go over three things about the Yaesu FD65 memory management that I think will help you have a better experience. Uh, each of these areas has some nuances that I think will be helpful for you to understand. And so let's get into it. First, let's talk about CTCSS. That is a squelch, among many other squelch settings that are available on this radio. You can see it in the submenu by holding the F key and scrolling down to item number eight, and you'll see CTCSS. And you hit the F key again, and you'll be presented with the option of changing either the transmit squelch or the receive squelch. In my experience, the transmit is what most repeaters require if they have a squelch gate at all. And of course that means that some repeaters will not open up unless you have the proper CTCSS tone encoded in your transmission. So this is how you do it. You would hit the F key on transmit and then adjust up or down with the arrow keys in order to set the correct tone. And then if you hit the F key again, that has set your selection. I've noticed that on this particular menu item, you have to hold the F key to get back out of that menu. Then you can use the shortcut of the transmit button to return you to the main screen. Once that has been set, an easy way to set your CTCS is on the frequency that you want to apply that tone. You select that memory or go to that frequency in VFO, hit the F key, and you will notice that an F symbol appears on the screen and then hit P3 and then you will see set SQL type off is on by default, and you just simply scroll through to the correct one. We're gonna look for T-tone for the transmit tone, hit the F key, and then when it will return you to the main screen with the memory that we had selected, or the frequency that we had selected, and you will notice at the top there, it says TTN. That tells you that your squelch selection has been applied and will be applied when you hit the transmit key for this particular frequency. Um, the problem here is it doesn't show you what the squelch is. So you apply to squelch, a transmit CTCSS squelch, but how do you go about checking it or editing it in the future? So if you hit F key after you do that, notice that you will automatically be left at item number 29 in the menu, which is squelch type. And that is the menu item that you're bringing up when you hit the F key followed by the P3 key. It's initiating that item through shortcut keys. So later on, if you go to a memory and you want to verify or edit it, go hit the F key until the menu comes up. Go to item number eight. And this particular one, I know the frequency is 100. The CTCS transmit frequency is 100. And I go in there and I can see that it actually is 100. Let's go on to another memory that I know has a different CTCSS frequency. We'll choose this one, WB0. ZKB, it's a repeater in the area where I live. We're going to hold the F key, go to CTCSS, and notice that the transmit tone is 114.8. So you can see how we can verify, or we could edit that if a mistake was made when we were creating that memory. Okay, now we're going to move on to tip number two, memory bank management. First of all, the radio is capable of storing tons and tons of memories, so you will probably want to uh, organize them as time goes on. So you can um, add frequencies to one of 10 banks, um, and you would do that by holding down the band key when you have the frequency from your memories that you want to assign to a bank. I'm going to pick this channel right here. I'm gonna hold down the band key 
and you will want to do this from your main memory memories uh, selection screen and it is indicated by no bank and then you'll scroll through through until you see the bank that you want now I want you to notice this nuance here I've selected bank 5 and notice how the number 5 is flashing and I'm going to hold down the F key for a second or two here and then the flashing has stopped that tells you that the frequency that we've chosen has been assigned to bank number five and I can hit the transmit key to return to that main screen and there it is now we can verify that by holding down the band key scrolling with our arrows to bank number five tapping the V slash M button and we can see that that frequency has now been applied we're going to go back to the main memory channel which is no bank indicated no bank there on the main screen. We're going to hit V slash M. So we're back to that selection of the all the memories that I have programmed into this radio, not just selections based on one of the banks that we have been talking about. And I'm going to pick another one here to assign to bank number five, and you're going to see where things get uh, can be a little bit tricky to understand what's happening. So we're going to hold down the bank key as we did before. We're going to go all the way down to bank number five, and notice that bank number five is not flashing. So it doesn't give you a visual indicator that that uh, will help you understand that you've written the memory to that channel, or to that bank, I should say. So we're going to hold down the F key, and nothing really changes on the screen. But let's go ahead and verify that that memory has been assigned to bank number five. So I'm going to hold down the bank key. We're going to roll through to find the bank that we uh, think we wrote it to. Recall that bank by holding the, or tapping the V slash M key. And notice that that memory is there. So just know that that happens. Another thing you want to know about is if you are recalling a memory bank, and let's just go through the list to number eight just for the sake of the example. And I have not written any memories to this particular bank. And I tap the VM. Um, it looks like I should have recalled bank number eight, but there are no memories there. And you don't get any indication that there's an error. But in fact, the radio just doesn't do anything if you select a bank with no memories in it. So now I've held down the band key. And even though I went to bank eight and hit the memory, the bank recall button, the V slash M, I'm still at bank number five. So just note that about this radio that it can be a little confusing when you think you're selecting a group of memories, but there is nothing actually written there. And the default behavior doesn't give you a visual indicator to let you know that nothing actually happened. So. We have memories in bank number five that I put there for the sake of example, and I want to get rid of them from there. Let's just say you put one in there and you're changing the way you're organizing it, and you're gonna remove some of the memories or all of them. Um, we're going to hold down the band key, and then bank number five is shown on the main screen. And it's not very obvious what you should do at this point, but you hold down the F key, and then it will return you to showing you memories that are in bank number five. But since we only assigned two here, now there's only one. So we have removed the other memory that we added for the for today's example from this bank. And then we'll pull this one out of there too and see what happens. Now, we have been returned to the main uh, memories indicated by the no bank here. And we can hit the transmit key to go out of that. All right, let's go on to the final tip, how you can use skip frequencies to uh, avoid interruptions in your scans. Let's go ahead and pick bank number one where I have my local repeater stored. And we're gonna recall that. And I have a bunch of frequencies in here. One of them is the same repeater, both in 70 centimeters and two meters. And I would prefer only to listen to the two meter uh, frequency for that repeater, but I like to check the other one on occasion. 
So I've got a, both of them assigned here, but I don't actually want the scan to stop on the 70 centimeter version. So we're going to go back to, to our main memory channel, and then we're going to go into the menu, and we're going to go down to item number 28, and you'll see it says skip, and we'll use the F key to access that menu, and it presents you a list of all the memories that you have. You can roll through them. And we're looking for N0BVE, which is the 70 centimeter frequency that we want to add to the skip. And all you have to do is push the function key and you get a black rectangle around the number two there with that particular frequency. And if you move up and down, notice that that stays, that little visual indicator stays. And that tells you that the frequency has been added to your no scan list. And we can hit the transmit key to go back to our main memory bank. And when you scroll through to that particular memory, there it is, N0BVE. Notice on the left under the memory number, there is a pentagon shape with the letter M in it. That's different from the rest of the memories. So if we go up one, See, it just has a black box with a letter M in it. When you go down there, it changes to a pentagon shape instead of a rectangle. And that is a little visual cue that that particular frequency has been added to the no scan. Now here's the other nuance that's going to help you. When you go to, let's go back to bank number one. We're going to recall that. So we have N0BVE there but there's no little cue that that's on the skip. And I've recorded a slow motion here to show you that even though there's no indicator, it's still being skipped when you're in the memory bank mode. So that uh, skip will be applied regardless of which memory mode you're using. So just a little tip for you. I hope this helps you in using this radio, and you'll join me again next time. Thank you.